Thank you um, very much, Anne. And, and thank you to Cheryl and Renata for your um, wonderful presentations. And thank you, of course, to everyone who is here at the webinar today. So I'm Professor Kate Hoy. I'm a clinical neuropsychologist and neuroscientist. And my research is focused on the development of novel brain stimulation therapeutics for dementia. So in my talk today, I'm going to briefly cover my personal journey and how I came to work in the area of Alzheimer's treatment development, why we believe brain stimulation could be effective in treating Alzheimer's, and what we're doing at the Bionics Institute to progress the development of this new potential treatment. So to start at the beginning, uh, my interest in brain stimulation as a possible treatment for Alzheimer's actually began in the late 2000s. And like most things in science, it developed from a combination of personal experience and serendipitous research findings. So as I mentioned, I'm a clinical neuropsychologist, and that's a type of psychologist who assesses the relationship between brain changes and behaviour, specifically cognition. In essence, we look at the impact of brain illness or injury on people's attention, memory, and executive function. I completed my training to be a clinical neuropsychologist in 2007, and throughout the final years of my training and through my early clinical work, I actually became quite frustrated with the lack of treatments that were available for my patients, including those with Alzheimer's disease. I was able to assess my patient's cognition and their memory and thinking difficulties. I could let them know what I found, what the results were, explain what the progression was most likely to be, but that was really it. There was no effective treatments that I could offer or suggest um, that could actually improve their symptoms. And ultimately that was something that, that I didn't think was good enough um, and I really wanted to, to dedicate my, my career into to finding something that we could offer people. Now, the serendipitous part was at the same time that I was in my early clinical career, I was working on clinical trials, investigating a form of brain stimulation, specifically magnetic stimulation, for treating major depression. And it was during these trials that the idea first emerged for using brain stimulation to improve cognition. Because early on in their treatment courses, the patients with depression would often report that they were thinking more clearly they would give examples like they were able to read an entire newspaper story or pay attention to a whole new story on TV where before that was really difficult for them. And it was often those patients who then went on to have improvements in their depression over the course of the treatment to the point that we actually started to consider that an informal sign of response. Um, we would see someone reporting those things early on and think, oh, this, this might be someone who's starting to respond to the treatment. Now, this was certainly an intriguing observation, but we're scientists, so we had to actually assess whether or not it was accurate. So we conducted an analysis where we combined the data from four clinical trials, um, and there were over 130 patients in those trials, to investigate whether these early improvements in cognition predicted eventual depression improvement in a course of magnetic stimulation treatment. And that is exactly what we saw, that improved memory early on was significantly associated with reduced depression at the end of treatment. Most importantly, though, we also saw that early on, at the time where patients' memory was improved, there weren't any improvements yet in their depression, which meant that we were able to show for the first time that magnetic stimulation was able to improve cognition independently of any effect it might have been having on depression. Now, this was really significant because it opened up a whole new area of treatment innovation for people with cognitive disorders like Alzheimer's. And so it was that combination of my early clinical experience and my early research experience that was central to my decision to embark on a clinical research career in this area, to focus on developing treatments that were missing for my patients back then and are still largely missing today. Indeed, as we've heard this morning, Despite billions of dollars and decades of research, there are still no truly effective treatments for Alzheimer's. And this represents an extraordinary unmet global need. Because of this, there is now an increased focus on novel therapeutic targets for Alzheimer's, looking beyond the usual neurotransmitter and more recently amyloid tau-based targets to try and identify changes in the brain which are more closely linked to Alzheimer's symptoms and therefore more likely to be effective targets for treatment. One such treatment target 
um, which is particularly well suited to brain stimulation approaches, is something called dysfunctional connectivity. So dysfunctional connectivity occurs when connections between brain cells are altered in some way, which impacts the transmission of activity or information throughout the brain. Importantly, we now know that healthy brain connectivity is important for successful cognition. So this is what we used to think um, how cognition was represented in the brain. Uh, we've come a very long way in our understanding of that now. So contrary to this and what we once thought, we now know that there aren't specific discrete brain areas that are responsible for discrete parts of our, our thinking. Um, there isn't the math part of the brain or, or the, um, the decision-making part of the brain. Not, it's not that discrete. Rather, successful cognition actually relies on the structural and functional health of widespread neural networks. There's now been a large amount of research mapping these networks, determining where they are located, how they are connected throughout the brain, and how they underlie brain function. With many studies showing that the transmission of information throughout the brain via key neural hubs is essential to our ability to take in, integrate, and use information from our internal and external environments, which is essentially what cognition is. When this transmission breaks down in some way, you are left with dysfunctional connectivity, which can lead to impaired cognitive function. So how does dysfunctional connectivity arise in Alzheimer's? Well, as we've heard, we know that in Alzheimer's, when disease proteins such as amyloid and tau build up in and around brain cells, it can actually damage their functioning and damage their ability to fire or become active. This can over time lead to changes in brain activity in key neural hubs as these proteins accumulate or build up. These changes in local brain activity then go on to disrupt transmission of activity more broadly throughout the brain, leading to dysfunctional connectivity in the large scale neural networks which are critical for functions such as cognition. So when we look, look at that um, representation in Alzheimer's in the brain, um, when we remove amyloid, we still have this dysfunctional connectivity. So even if you are able to successfully remove amyloid, you aren't necessarily repairing the damage that it's already been done. And we have seen that this dysfunctional connectivity is in fact directly associated with impairments in cognitive functioning, such as memory. And we showed that in some of my own work, which was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease earlier this year. In, the, in this study, we were also able to show that the dysfunctional connectivity in Alzheimer's was indeed related back to changes in local brain activity in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is a key hub of the frontoparietal network, which is heavily involved in memory. So if we take all these findings together, it indicated to us that if you're able to find a way to increase brain activity in key local re brain regions in a way that could then improve connectivity throughout the brain, then this could be an effective treatment for improving cognition in Alzheimer's. Transcranial magnetic stimulation or just magnetic stimulation has been shown to be able to do just that. So magnetic stimulation is a form of non-invasive brain stimulation. It uses magnetic pulses, which pass freely into the brain to induce an electrical current, which causes brain cells to fire. Stimulation is applied externally to the head via a handheld figure of eight coil. These magnetic um, stimulation pulses can be applied in a variety of different patterns, all of which have slightly varying effects on the brain. For example, when we apply the pulses at a high frequency, and by that we mean um, by 10 pulses per second or higher, and we do that over and over again in a stimulation session, and we then repeat these sessions across multiple days and even weeks, we can actually induce lasting changes in brain activity, not only where we stimulate, but also in more distally connected brain regions. In this way, magnetic stimulation can strengthen activity throughout the brain. And it is this ability of magnetic stimulation to restore connectivity throughout the brain, which positions it as a potentially transformative treatment approach for Alzheimer's disease. So magnetic stimulation has actually been around for quite some time. We know uh, a really large amount about it. It's been investigated for more than 30 years. It is considered to be safe and well-tolerated treatment with relatively few side effects, the most common being headaches or discomfort at the treatment site. 
You can actually hear and feel the magnetic pulses as they, um, as they tap on your head and pass through into the brain. But magnetic stimulation is most known as being an effective treatment for major depression. And Australia was at the forefront of its development and translation. So magnetic stimulation for the treatment of depression received approval from um, the US Food and Drug Administration in November 2008 and most recently was placed on the Medicare Benefits Schedule in Australia in November 2021. And that actually makes us one of the few places in the world to publicly fund magnetic stimulation treatment for depression. And there are now a growing number of clinics in Australia and around the world where you can access this treatment. So now at the Bionics Institute, we're going to continue Australia's history of leading the field by advancing research into the use of magnetic stimulation to treat Alzheimer's. So I've only very recently moved across to the Bionics Institute um, and I came here because I wanted to be able to translate my research into tangible positive outcomes for people, actually getting treatment innovations to patients where they are needed. And it was clear to me that the Bionics Institute is the best place for me to do that. So what exactly are we going to be doing here? So we are currently developing a highly personalised approach to delivering magnetic stimulation which is aimed at modulating a very specific type of brain activity that we believe will lead to improvement in Alzheimer's. We'll be investigating this personalised treatment approach in a clinical trial which will begin in the first half of 2023. So why is personalising treatment important? Well, basically because everyone's brains are different. And so we need to make sure that we're providing a treatment that is specifically tailored for each individual person. If we just apply a one-size-fits-all treatment, then we're less likely to see positive results in the majority of people. And so we hope that by personalising treatment, it will provide the best chance of improving cognition for as many people as possible. And as we've heard today, the development of an effective treatment for Alzheimer's will have a profound positive impact. Effective treatment could allow people to live more independently for longer, to participate socially to a greater extent, and perhaps even remain in the workforce in some capacity for a period of time. And all of this would, by extension, also have considerable positive impacts for the many care partners of those with Alzheimer's. We believe our magnetic stimulation approach could be a transformative treatment for people with Alzheimer's and their carers. Thank you very much.